In this video, we're going to talk about heat capacity and specific heat. So heat capacity, denoted with a capital C, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of an object by one degree Celsius. Its units are joules per degree Celsius. Specific heat, on the other hand, and this is denoted with a lowercase s or a lowercase c, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. And accordingly, its units are joules per grams times degrees Celsius. So you can see here heat capacity and specific heat are very similar, although there's one important difference. Specific heat specifies the particular amount of the substance that you have. It's one gram. While heat capacity leaves it vague, it just says an object, right? It doesn't tell you the amount of that object. You have to tell heat capacity how much of the object you have. So in practice, specific heat is more practical for solving problems, while heat capacity is more of an important concept to just think about and understand, because you have to actually tell heat capacity how much of the object you have, while specific heat is very useful in that we know it's one gram. So let's think about the difference between these two with an example. So you can look up on a table that the specific heat of water, and of course this is the lowercase s or lowercase c, is 4.184 joules per grams times degrees Celsius. So this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. But if we wanted to see the heat capacity for some given amount of water that's not one gram, let's say 10 grams, we could figure that out by multiplying the specific heat by the amount of grams of the substance we have. So we know this is the specific heat of water, and if we multiply it by 10 grams of water, the grams will cancel out, and we find that the heat capacity of 10 grams of water is 41.84 joules per degree Celsius. And this makes sense. If we have 10 times as much water, we had one gram here, now we have 10 grams, we're gonna need 10 times as much heat. So the practical equations that you can obtain from these, these concepts are in the red box here. This equation right here is technically true, but you'll use it less frequently. These are really the equations that you'll use to solve problems, and you can see this little s and c here are interchangeable. So for an example, they may ask you how much heat is required to raise one liter of water by five degrees Celsius. Well, you would use these equations here. Pick either one, they both mean the same thing. And I went ahead and set that up here. So what you need to know is that M is mass, but they gave us a volume of water. But we know the density of water is one kilogram per liter. So we know one liter of water is one kilogram of water. So now we have our mass. We know our specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram times Celsius. And we know the delta T or the change in temperature is five degrees Celsius. So I went ahead and plugged everything in down here. You can see for the mass, I had to change kilograms to grams because specific heat is in units of grams, right? And I was able to find that the amount of heat required to raise one liter of water by five degrees Celsius is 20,920 joules. Okay, let's do another example problem. So I say 30 grams of copper at 120 degrees Celsius are placed in 55 grams of water at 21.9 degrees Celsius. So clearly the copper is very hot. It's a lot hotter than the water. So it's gonna warm up this water. So assuming no energy is lost to the surroundings, calculate the final temperature of the water. So of course, this hot piece of copper is going to warm up the 55 grams of water, 21.9 degrees Celsius, is pretty cold. That's a little bit colder than room temperature. But the key is you have to understand that the final temperature of the water is gonna be equal to the final temperature of the copper. When you put a hot substance into a colder substance, the hot substance transfers heat to the colder substance until they meet at the same exact temperature. So that's the key to solving this problem. We know that the heat lost by the copper, or negative Q, is equal to positive Q, the heat gained by the water. And we know Q is equal to ms delta T, or mc delta T. So we know that negative ms delta T, the heat lost by the copper, is equal to ms delta T, the heat gained by the water. And another important thing for this problem is to understand that delta T, or the change in temperature here, is equal to T final minus T initial, or the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And remember, this final temperature 
is the same for both substances. Both the copper and the water are going to have the same final temperature. So I went ahead and plugged in all the numbers here for each equation. So 30 grams for the copper, for the mass, the specific heat of the copper was 0.38, and then delta T, this is very important, T final minus T initial. So T final, that's what we're solving for, right? However, T initial was given. The copper started at 120 degrees Celsius. And this is all negative, remember, because this is heat lost. So over here, we have heat gained by the water. So we had 55 grams of water for the mass. Here's the specific heat of water. And then again, delta T is T final minus T initial. T final is what we're solving for. T initial, they told us, was 21.9 degrees Celsius. And notice this is all positive because this is heat gained. So this Tf here is the same variable. The final temperature of the water is the final temperature of the copper. So this is just a big algebra problem and you have to solve for the final temperature. But once you do all the algebra and you get to the final temperature, you will find that the final temperature of the water and the final temperature of the copper for that matter is 26.53 degrees Celsius.